Hello everyone, my name is Emily Olson. I'm a senior editor at Moby Health News. Today we're here with Russ Johannesson. He is the CEO of Bluco, which is a digital health company focused on managing diabetes and other related chronic conditions. Um, today we're taking a look back at 2021 in digital health, as well as looking ahead to 2022 and seeing what the space will bring this year. Um, so thanks so much for joining us on Hims TV. Thanks Emily, I appreciate you having me. Yeah. Um, so for my first question, I'm just going to take a look back at 2021. Um, how would you sum up 2021 in the digital health space? Well, obviously, the, the pandemic, you know, continued to serve as the major forcing function in the development and adoption of all kinds of digital health technologies, both at speed and at scale. That was true starting in, you know, early 2020 as the pandemic started through 2021. And I think that's going to continue to fuel, obviously, most of the trends in 2022. Some of the things that we saw in 2021 are, were relatively obvious, continued acceptance and adoption of, of digital health solutions that were really focused on facilitating care delivery in a remote environment, both remote monitoring, but also moving deeper into remote care management, starting with really increasing access. And then I think really starting to embrace the long-term value proposition many of us have seen in remote care management over time, leading to improved health outcomes. So I think that continued acceptance and adoption, both by patients, but also by providers and really by those willing to pay for it. So increase in reimbursement support We've seen this, you know, we're a global business, we're in 29 countries around the world, and we, we definitely saw this increase in reimbursement support for digital health solutions, not just remote monitoring, but, but deeper digital health solutions as well in many markets around the world, not just the US, but Germany, France, Belgium, others. Um, and I think, you know, we'll continue to see that going forward. And then maybe, maybe one thing we've all seen is, is, is as these new solutions and technologies get adopted and are having real impact, you know, the capital flows towards it. So we continue to see the increased investment across the board in digital health. From my perspective, I kind of thought that chronic condition management, like managing diabetes or heart disease, um, is a growing focus for digital health and maybe in health tech more generally. How do you think that could evolve going forward into 2022? Yeah, I, I definitely think that will continue. You know, many of the digital health solutions, in particular things that, that were driving out of the pandemic were about remote access and they were really focused, the early telemedicine solutions focused on, you know, acute care, urgent care, those types of, of things. But what we've seen, and we've frankly seen it in, in conditions like diabetes for a while now, the ability to drive chronic condition management over time. That's really where a lot of the value is going to come longer term and you're starting to see those solutions. It's, it's frankly some of the things you see in the market over the last couple of years as a teledoc, which started really as a as an access play, makes an acquisition of a Lavongo, which really starts to get into much more of a chronic condition management, uh, care management kind of approach. And I think that will continue. And I think that's really what is you know, the promise of digital health in the future is really getting beyond improving access, which is great, but to really increasing and improving health outcomes in real time, over time, not just for acute situations, but for chronic management as well. So you kind of touched on this a little bit before, but 2021 was a huge year for digital health funding and investment. Um, Gluco had a Series D this year, or last year rather, um, already forgetting what year it is, yeah, early in 2022. Um, so what do you think is contributing to this increase in investment? Well, it, it, it's obviously an area that can have real impact and drive real value, um, not just on improving health outcomes, but ultimately downstream that leads to improved efficiencies in the healthcare system, reduce, reduction of costs, et cetera. So there's real value, value to be created, not just societal value on improving health for everybody, but real economic value, especially now too, as you see things like reimbursement trends shifting where these types of digital solutions have a much bigger audience in terms of getting paid for, right? So not just CMS, Medicaid, Medicare, and the reimbursement rates and improvements in CPT codes for things like remote patient monitoring, et cetera, but the commercial health plans also following suit and, and providing support for that because they do see the long-term benefit in reducing costs and improving health outcomes for that. So I think there's an attractive market um, 
it is the kind of market that um, is getting quite competitive, I think, from a solutions mm -hmm. perspective. And I think the capital is chasing those opportunities where they think there's real growth market growth opportunities. And that's, um, I think, to the benefit overall of, of, of the health industry. But certainly there's a lot of opportunity in digital health to, to, to find the right kind of funding, the right kind of partners, and really have an impact in the space. Yeah. Do you think that investment boom will continue into 2022? Or do you think there's kind of a point when, like you said, there's maybe too many different players in there and it's starting to get confusing? No, I, I think it'll continue to grow at a rapid pace. I mean, 20, the first, at least the data I've seen on the first three quarters of 21 outpaced the record growth in 2020. And I think we'll continue yeah. to see that going forward. And there are some interesting new, it's driving and spurring innovation into new areas. And so I think you'll start to see that invest with those investment dollars, you know, they've already started to flow this way, but things like the next iteration of telehealth, again, shifting from acute and urgent care to specialized and chronic management. Um, wearable tech for health monitoring continues to be a big hot area for investment with a lot of upside opportunity. Um, the digital mental health apps, digital health is, is a, a real problem, not just in the US, but globally. And it's particularly well suited to remote access with a caregiver. And so I think you see that continuing to drive a lot of growth. Um, digital therapeutics is one that we're super excited about because we, we do a lot in this space and see that where both pharmaceutical companies, medical device companies really looking for those solutions, technology solutions that can support a drug launch or a device launch and really drive engagement and adherence for that particular therapy over time. And what, one of late I've seen a lot more of too is digital women's health. Um, mm -hmm. 2021 saw some of that growth. I think that kind of market is pushing past things like pregnancy and fertility to things that are more chronic condition management um, for women in particular going forward. But there's a lot of opportunity in that space for sure. Yeah, you mentioned kind of digital women's health, um, digital mental health are kind of big areas for growth. What other trends do you think we'll be seeing kind of grow as we look ahead in 2022? Yeah, I think, I think we'll continue to see more and more focus by pharma companies and medical device companies on those digital therapeutic solutions, oh. digital companions that go along with a, a drug that they're bringing through trial, for example, or going commercial into market that support a user's experience in effectively onboarding to that therapy, whether it's a drug or a device, and then continuing to adhere to it over time. Um, and that you're seeing more and more of that. And you're starting to see um, payers, health, US health plans also looking at kind of in, increased usage of digital health solutions and leveraging that for their covered populations because they see the value and the benefit in being able to reach them kind of not just in an office visit kind of scenario, but supported with digital technology in a way that is meaningful for them. And those, that adoption rate drives a lot of other downstream, I think, trends that, that we'll continue to see in 2022 and beyond in terms of how the technology gets implemented. Well, well one of the big things that I think is going to drive a lot of the underlying trends that happen in 2022 is really a continued push for data interoperability in healthcare. The interoperability of EHRs, devices, information systems, the digital health tools that are out there. This push towards interoperability is really critical to making the solutions that are out there in the market more valuable as we do really operate in a connected ecosystem. In addition, some of the rules in the US market are changing around interoperability that are really continuing to enhance and drive this push so that with all of this plethora of data that is out there to help patients and providers in particular uh, around decision support, it's coming from so many different places. The need for both standards and interoperability to be able to share that data effectively and easily is just critically important. And that will really fuel the value proposition, I think, under a lot of the digital health solutions that are pushing in 2021, which leads into the leveraging of AI and ML capabilities to provide those, those just-in-time adaptive interventions that will drive improved health outcomes and better interactions between patients and providers. Sure. Well, Russ, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I hope you can come back and talk to us more as the year unfolds and we kind of see what really happens with digital health in 2022. 